Hi, I'm Noel Local from Salt and Light Television here at the very site of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is a very sacred place, the place where Jesus had died, was buried, and rose again. Over the past seven days, many of us at Salt and Light have been here in the Holy Land, following in the footsteps of Christ and reflecting on his life. Since being here, we have followed the life of Jesus from when he was born in Bethlehem to where he grew up in Nazareth, from where he preached on the Mount of the Beatitudes to where he performed miracles at the Sea of Galilee and now to this very place. The biblical events that took place here over 2,000 years ago are interlinked as is the Paschal mystery of the death and resurrection of Christ, which was fulfilled after thousands of years of prophecies within the very walls of this massive church. You can feel it. This place is the source from which all mankind receives salvation. Within these walls contain the most important place for Christians. For over 2,000 years, pilgrims have come from all over the world to see Calvary and the tomb of Christ. This building enshrines the last hours of Christ on earth who made man died for our salvation. As I reflect on the fundamental importance of this place, it becomes very clear that this place is indeed the wellspring from which the salvation of mankind springs forth. It is truly the cornerstone of our Catholic faith. Despite this building's remarkable legacy, I have no intentions to dive into a historical account, except to say that the decision to build the temple here is said to have been the result of the lobbying on the part of St. Helena, the mother of Constantine, 300 years after the crucifixion. Of course, the original appearance of the church remains somewhat uncertain, owing to the many changes that have happened here over the past 2,000 years. Today, it is the home of the Eastern Orthodoxy, the Oriental Orthodoxy, and the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the sepulcher, the empty tomb of Christ. Patriarch Bartholomew summarized it best when Pope Francis visited this site during his apostolic visit back in May of 2014. He stated that the first and greatest message of this empty sepulcher is that death, this last enemy of ours, the source of all fears and passions has been conquered. It no longer holds the final word in our life. It has been overcome by love, by him who voluntarily accepted to endure death for the sake of others. Every death for the sake of love, for the sake of another, is transformed into life, true life. Christ is risen from the dead by trampling down on death, and to those in the tombs, he is granted life. And yet, there is another message that emanates from this venerable tomb, this holy sepulcher. It is the message that history cannot be programmed, that the ultimate word in history does not belong to God, but to man. In vain did the guards of secular power watch over this tomb. In vain did they place a very large stone against the door of the tomb, so that none could roll it away. In vain are the long-term strategies of the world's powerful. Everything is eventually contingent upon the judgment and will of God. Every effort of contemporary humanity to shape its future alone and without God constitutes vain conceit. And finally now, I leave you with this final thought. Even with the many pilgrims that you see walking to and fro in all directions in what you'd expect to see in a shopping mall rather than in this holy place, you can still fall on your knees and proclaim, Alleluia, Jesus is not here, Jesus is risen. And without a doubt, to be present here in this holy place, in this sepulcher where Jesus had suffered for our humanity is truly a humbling experience. Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is not here. I'm Noel Okul for Salt and Light Television here in Jerusalem.